Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is imminent. Absolutely could happen at any moment. Could happen during this video. Hope you guys had a great day today. Um, it's uh, There's a lot to unpack here. So I'm, I'm just trying to pray for wisdom to... Um, share what the Lord has put on my heart to share. Um, I will be sharing from my first book, Behold, I Stand at the Door Knock. For those of you who don't know me, I welcome any new subscribers, but um, this channel is to locate and educate prodigals at risk. A prodigal is someone who has been born again, saved, and is out there running, um, only perceiving that God is mad at them only perceiving they have lost or forfeited their salvation when the fact of the matter is that is a lie. That is one of the biggest lies the enemy tells us, that we've lost our salvation, okay? Salvation cannot be forfeited because it was purchased by Jesus Christ on the cross. God does not share his glory with anyone. Jesus Christ gets all the credit for what happened on that cross. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, was buried, and on the third day rose again. And he's coming back to get us <laughs> any moment, any moment, guys. Prophecy is jumping off the pages. It is insane what is going on. And if you don't have the wisdom or are not praying and looking and if God is not showing you what's going on or you're not anticipating what's going on biblically, um, it's very easy to be deceived. And if you're not saved and you're within the sound of my voice, please, I would encourage you to do it now because you don't want to be here in the tribulation that is setting up right before us. Um, a is to simply, it, God made it as simple as ABC. A is to simply admit that you are a sinner in need of a savior. B Believe that Jesus Christ is the only Savior of this world and shed his blood for your condition of sin and see, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And those of us who have been saved already, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And we are sealed permanently from the moment we said, I do to Jesus Christ. We are sealed and he keeps that covenant. He keeps that commitment. He is faithful, even when we remain faithless. Anyway, um, this is called The Making of History. Um, and like I said, it's from my first book. My, my, what a big mouth God Almighty has redeemed. My life wasn't as worthless as you made it once seem. I pray that every black sheep within the sound of my voice becomes radically loosened from your grip and able to make a free choice. I bet you never realized when you bound me up in chains that my life would be an instrument to spare others from your pain. I bet you never noticed as you pushed me further into that grave that my heart was transcribing notes that God in his mercy had saved. I bet it never occurred to you, Satan, when you tempted me into your land that God would call me to be an eyewitness and one day take the stand. I'm almost compelled to thank you for pushing me so hard to the ground for had I not been in that dirt, my Savior's mercy, I may not have found. So it is in humble adoration I dedicate each word found within these pages to the faithful shepherd of the flock, the lamb ordained before the ages. The rulers of this world could not have known the end of his story, for if they had known the great mystery of God, they wouldn't have crucified my Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8. But we speak the wisdom of God, in a mystery. The hidden wis wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Guys, we need to put on our armor, our spiritual armor right now. Ephesians 6.10 tells us to put on our full armor to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And those darts are coming hard and fast to Christians and non-Christians alike in these final moments of the end of days. Um, you know, do not trust what you see with your natural eyes. I know it sounds crazy, but um, this is something that the Lord is putting in my heart. Don't trust 
what you see, you know, about the COVID, about the pandemic. This is all a setup, guys. All right, it is a setup. What you see on TV, I mean, that war is real. That's a real war. Jesus said there'd be wars and rumors of wars that is coming. And the second coming and the rapture are two different events, guys. The rapture is when Jesus Christ comes for his own, the bride of Christ, his church, and comes into the clouds. That trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise first, and we, this generation, I believe, who are alive and remain, are caught up with them and ever so be with the Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words. So that is the rapture, the snatching away, the harpazo. And the second coming is seven years later when we, the church, the bride of Christ, come back with Christ in the millennial, in the millennial reign. Okay, so what I wanted to share, um, if you guys haven't seen JD for all today, um, that is a Calvary Chapel pastor in Hawaii. That's my online pastor. If you don't have a pastor, I would recommend that you go to jdfarag.org. That's jdfarag.org. And he gives um, prophecy updates weekly. And um, he'll catch up real fast, real fast. Um, anyway, 2022 World Government Summit. Dot org. Okay, if you go to worldgovernmentsummit.org, those are the global experts, okay? The shaping of our future governments, okay? Agenda 2022, they're exploring the frontiers. Yeah, aliens. Uh, they're they're going to talk about the future of education. Oh, well, we're going far with that education, aren't we? Okay, educating our children. They don't know whether they're male or female. Come on, get a grip. New virtual worlds. This is what they're looking into. The World Summit, okay? Global AI, nuclear power, all right? So I was listening today, and this lady, I didn't catch her name, but um, I mean, tribulation is setting up, guys. I, the prophecies jumping off the pages, all right? Jumping off the pages right in front of our eyes. Okay, so, and she said, I didn't get her name, she said, well, she was part of the summit. We are on the brink of a dramatic change. We are about to abandon the traditional system of money, hello, cashless society, to digital blockchain system. That will be, catch this word, sovereign in nature. And I quote her, in my opinion, we're gonna need a digital constitution of human rights. Wow, did I even hear that right? So that every human being has a chance of a better life in this new world order. Hmm. First off, I'm not gonna be here for this new world order. We're not gonna be here, um, we'll be raptured. Okay, that's the seven year tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel as prophesied in the Old Testament, okay? Anyway, I looked up sovereignty, that word caught me like, whoa, sovereignty? Only God is sovereign, all right? Sovereignty is the absolute right to do all things according to his pleasure, all right? And it's, uh, sovereignty obviously is a stumbling block for unbelievers, you know, because they want to do their own will, do as thou will, you know, do what you want to do. Everybody wants to rebel, and the flesh, this flesh, wants to rebel, okay? And it's only natural that our sinful condition and our flesh want to rebel against God. But sovereignty is God's own supremacy. And don't you understand? Satan wanted to become like God. All right. So he is decidingly becoming sovereign. Not to us. He's not my sovereign God. He is the little G, little God of this world. The prince of the power of the air the God of this world, who is blinding the eyes and the hearts of those who are not saved, okay? They are in the kingdom of darkness. If you're not walking in the kingdom of light, where Jesus Christ transfers us into that kingdom the moment we believe in his death, burial, and resurrection for our sin, um, the moment we believe we are transferred into that kingdom of light. 
And if we have not yet made that choice, which I strongly recommend that you do, um, we're walking in the kingdom of darkness. All right. So it's, um, it's quite breathtaking what's going on right now. The global experts, okay, <laughs> pray for wisdom. There's a great deception that's coming to this planet. And, uh, yeah, so that every human being has a chance of a better life uh, in this new world order. We won't be here, guys, soon and very soon. We are going to see our Lord. We're going to look at him face to face. And I know those of us who are born again, and that's the only Christian there is, born again Christian. Um, Jesus said you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven or to see God. The only way to the Father is through the Son, right? Um, God is holy, and we cannot in our flesh approach a holy God in our sinfulness. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him we might have eternal life. And remember, those of us who are born again, we have passed from condemnation. Our judgment was on the cross. All right? So don't judge yourself. All right? We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Works have nothing to do with salvation, guys. Anyways, this is called Marching Orders. I thought this would be appropriate. The Lord put it on my heart to share it. I know I shared it uh, a while ago, but... <sighs> And this is, um, as a prodigal, you know, I used to drive around wasted, you know, driving. I drive from Key West, that seven mile bridge or whatever, wasted. I mean, God has been with me in ways that I cannot even begin to tell you. He is with his own. All right. So if you're a prodigal, this might, um, you know, strike a chord in your heart. Do you remember those nights long ago when your heart questioned my love? You were shuffled from place to place because of your behavior, rejected. Do you remember? I was with you, dear one, despite your behavior, because my love isn't contingent upon behavior. My heart ached at the emptiness that you felt, the false accusations that you endured, and the desperate yearning to fit in and be accepted. You weren't meant to fit in, dear one, for you are created in my image to be uniquely peculiar, different. I wasn't shocked when you engaged in sin. I knew that you'd try whatever would have made you acceptable in their eyes, for at that time you were only searching desperately for your beloved, but I had already found you. You just hadn't awakened to my great love yet. Remember the many times you would turn up the stereo in your car, just driving along recklessly, singing, just passionately singing. You were singing to me, my love. You just didn't know it yet. Remember the hero songs that you loved, the father songs you adored, the passionate love songs you sang at the top of your lungs in the car. You, my daughter, were worshiping me. You just didn't know it yet. I'm the one who created your passion for worship, child, your hunger for truth. I wasn't shocked when you became addicted to your sins. My addiction was um, my drug of choice, or my, or my sin of choice was it, uh, drugs which Jesus delivered me immediately from when I came to back to him as a prodigal. I wasn't shocked when you became addicted to your sins because I knew that your heart was still searching to fill up that incredible vacuum that only my spirit can satisfy. I created you with that yearning child, a longing and a hunger so intense that it'll never be silenced or fulfilled by anything or anyone but me. Your search brought you, as it does everyone, to the realization that sin flesh hunger won't ever be satisfied because the flesh will never be content. I only intensified your yearning and eliminated the search faster for you so that you could agree with me that sin never satisfies. You didn't never give up easily though, did you? Deeper and deeper you dug into that never ending well, hoping to meet those needs. I bet you didn't realize that I created that part about you too. The digging and persistent. Oh, okay. 